live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering NAB 2017, brought to you by HGST. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at NAB 2017 in Las Vegas, California. 100,000 people all talking about broadcast industry, media industry, and tech. Met is the theme because the technology is completely interwoven in with media and entertainment. And we're excited to have a great represent uh, representative from the Hollywood section manager, society motion picture and television engineers, that's a mouthful, Steve Wong. Steve, welcome. Welcome, or Semti, that's the Semti. easiest. Semti, I'll go with Semti. <laughs> Peace from Semti. All right, so you, uh, you had an interesting talk earlier about blockchain, it's interesting. We've been here for a couple, three days and a lot of conversations of, of kind of similarities with trends we're seeing at other shows that we cover with democratization of data and access to the data and uh, abilities of cloud and integrated security, but we haven't really talked about blockchain, but I think that's kind of funny that now we're hearing the blockchain conversation come in to, as we hear in many places. Yeah. Where's blockchain fit? You know, it's really interesting because, you know, originally I heard of a blockchain for folks in the financial industry, and that, that's where the real big push is, and a lot of VCs were talking about blockchain. So I started to look at blockchain and media and entertainment, and I said, you know, could this fit? You know, what would be an interesting fit for this? And when you look at you know, making a movie or a television program, it's just a lot of transactions. And that's where blockchain is absolutely perfect. Right. You know, blockchain um, is basically a, a general ledger entry. So when you think of you know, why is that important, you know, I, I look back to the origination of, of content you know, for moving images, and, and that's a feature film script or a television script. Right, right. So imagine when you, when you write that, the first thing you do is you go and you register it with the copyright office. So my thought is, that's your first chain in that link of ownership. And so the next thing you do is you want to option that script off. So you're going to send out a document, you're a PDF, to your agent, he's going to send it out to a bunch of other agents, and then you'll have a track record of that next transaction, whoever received that. Right, right. So as you go down through that production, you know, I envision being able to tie back to that original ownership of that script, whoever options the script, to go out into the production, to actually take that all the way down to the storage, to the camera, and be able to pull even all that metadata together, link it to the, the ownership into that chain, all the way to the distribution to the actual viewer at the end of it. Yeah. So. The greatest descriptive term I've heard of blockchain is trust as a service, right. which is really an interesting way to, to coin it. And, and what's interesting about this industry is the transient nature of the way, you know, kind of groups of, of people and resources are assembled mm -hmm. around a particular project, the script in which you describe. They create this, this asset and then they, they, you know, they go poof, they go back, back from whence they came. Um, so it really that, that's begs, a challenge, right? right, it begs for, better trust solutions. So imagine you're, you, you get a deal with a show, and they say, you know what, we're going to pay you a rate, but uh, we're going to give you a percentage of the back end. And you say, fantastic, and then you go on to your next project. How do you find that out? Right, 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 right. now it's really difficult to track that all the way back, residuals or whatever. This would be an easy way to basically see who's seen it, who gets paid, what, what you're owed, and everything right. else. Now it's pretty crazy now, you said before we turn on the cameras, that it's all very, very still, old school, paper-based at this, at this point in time. That, that, that's the crazy thing about, you know, you, you look at other industries, you know, and, and I, I touch a lot of industries, and you think, wow, you know, we, we've got basic things such as, you know, when I start with an employer, I can go online and download all my stuff, and I never touch paper. But even today in the television industry, in the motion picture, you know, for 99% of it, it's all paper. So basically, all my stuff, I have to physically give them and fill out you know, documents at the end of the day. You know, a PA checks me in when I show up, a PA signs when I send out and on a piece of paper. They send in a football back to the financial office at the, at the show, and they do all this thing manually. You know, it's, it's coming to where it's, you know, they're doing digital onboarding, right. but all this stuff is still paper, right. because really it's, it's like we've been making movies for the last 100 years. So. Right, and yet we're surrounded at this conference with, with hundreds of thousands of square feet of, of new technology and new innovation and mm -hmm. computer-based stuff and IP-based stuff and crazy cameras and 360 cameras and 4K and 8K and HDTV. So clearly, 
there's no holding back the technology edge oh, that this but industry leverages, but then but if you make check billions of dollars, PA, right? Right. If you make billions of dollars the same way that you did 100 years ago, right? You know, who's going to be the guy that's going to change that that's or right. a girl, right? That's that's the challenge. If it's you know not broke, don't fix it. That's why I love Clayton Christensen's book. It's still my all-time favorite book, right? <laughs> it's hard to change when you've been making money yeah. uh, that same old way. So, some what are some of your other impressions of the show? You've been coming here for a number of years. The, the vibe's yeah. different. I keep hearing it's our first time, but I'm curious to get your kind of general impression. You know, the interesting thing is. Um, I, again, following the trends in, in other industries, um, you know, it's moved to a, a true digital IP workflow. So I'm seeing that really starting to materialize around here. You know, I think that the challenge is, you know, when, when I started off uh, 100 years ago on television, I was a, you know, a de facto MIS manager and director of research at, at ABC. And uh, back, back in those days in, in the, uh, the 90s, you know, I connected our, our, our sales team to the internet and they can actually send emails to the buyers. And, the, and that, that was like a big, big jump. That was a bad day though, in hindsight. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so you, email. you see folks that you know, understand video and BNC cables and things like that. Right, right. You have another group that understand Ethernet you know, and IP. And they have always been in two different worlds. You know, at every TV, TV station, you have your IT guy that would never touch the broadcast equipment. He was forbidden there right, you know, right. a long time ago. Right. But by now you see that merger, you know, where you really have you know, a manager or a VP that understands video and understands IP and says, you know, there's a better way to do that. And it's secure nowadays, and you know, if you take the right precautions. So, so that's the trend that I've seen change around here. Because the cameras are all digital, right? right, right. Everything is digital along that path. Why would you have to go back to, to video? Right. You know, we have things like Periscope, where you can do live video to millions of people. Right. So the technology is clearly here. It's just so, so amazing, you know, again, the, the, the themes are consistent wherever we go. This just democratization of, of access and ability that I can go sit in the front row of a Dodger Giants game and you know hold up my periscope and I can be pretend I've been Scully, yeah. you know, for a minute, which clearly I'm not, and people probably are not gonna watch me like they love Vince Scully. But it's it's just so interesting that at the low end, you know, there's so many tools available for people, for creators, mm -hmm. to the, that they just have access to they didn't have before. At the high end, I mean, the amount of stuff in this in this conference again with the 360 and the VR and the IR and the and the 4K and the 8K, um, it's 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 fascinating. But it just it's, I sometimes wonder is it is it is it too much? Are we still managing you know the storytelling? And as, that's as what you, it comes down to. You right. have to tell the story. And it's that's so the most important thing for the audience, right? Because the the alternate is just a, a quick swipe away. So it seems like the pressure. The, to perform and to get your ROI, especially on these bigger projects, it's got to be higher than it's ever been. All right, this is an interesting thing because what we've seen in Hollywood is an increase of production. You know, it used to be you know you'd wait um, you know for a TV season and they'd pitch the shows to the advertising agencies in New York, but now with the the increase of Netflix and Amazon, there's always a season because they're right. always buying things or right. whatever you know YouTube channels. We have you see YouTube stars that are making money and that's a valuable audience now where people are saying. I'll just watch YouTube tonight and see what's going on there from the people I like to follow. Right. So that, that drives production you know, goals and costs down because you can't do a $100 million YouTube production, or you can, I guess, but <laughs> probably won't make any money with I'm it. I'm sure they are. But the other thing that just it strikes me just is the compression around for, for feature movies mm -hmm. around the opening weekend because there's only 52 weekends a year right. and you know, some of those are probably not so great and from a marketing point of view and this just compression to make that number yeah. because the next weekend or two weekends from now, it's another movie or it's yeah. another movie or it's another movie. And so it seems just crazy. On the other hand, the long tail opportunities with BOD and multi forms of distribution, multi language, multi format, multi channel are bigger than they've ever been before. So it's this interesting dichotomy in terms of the way the market's evolving. But the interesting thing, because of that pressure, we, we see a huge growth in analytics. You know, we, there was a great article from about Netflix talking about the genres. You know, in Hollywood we've got like 13 genres or something like that. But, but Netflix has like 73 genres. Right. So they've broken down their audience because they, they have the device. You know, they know exactly what they're watching. So they use those analytics to their benefits when they buy. You know, at the studios are at a disadvantage unless they have the same things. Right. So you see guys like Legendary investing in analytics teams and 
you know, all these other folks out there that are investing in these analytics teams to make that, you know, a smarter investment for those right. movies. It is interesting, again, is it gets consistent, right? Is that now if you can track to the consumption of the material, you're not just shipping the product anymore and it's going to a theater and, you know, hopefully people are watching or not watching it, but now if they're watching it on their phone, you know, where they're watching it, you know, who's watching it, you know, what time, how often, well, how see, deep that, that's they the go, key. it's pretty if, interesting. If you have that application and you have the ability, you know, not like Netflix does, that's awesome. Right, but remember, right. most of the studios and networks, they're creating it and licensing it off. So they may not get that information, but that's where you see the other trend, where folks like HBO, they, you know, they create the content, but they also want to have that application device so they can get that information. So I think that's another trend you'll start so, seeing. So will the, the ones that are still independent that don't have the channel, you know, start to get back as part of their channel deal some of that data? It, it's, it's challenging, right? Because cable companies typically don't want to release that data. You know, a secondary OTT app may not want to release that data. So it really forces a creator to own that distribution chain so they can get that valuable data. So Interesting time. Somebody said earlier, I think in the week, that Netflix is now the largest producer. I don't, I don't know what, what yeah. genre of, of uh, category, but they're like one of the largest studios now mm -hmm. of all which is pretty fascinating when they were simply you know, DVD, DVD rental service uh, not that long ago for people that remember what a DVD was. Right. <laughs> and they right. had a difficulty getting contracts with studios. Right, exactly. But so make your own, I yeah. guess, that's the ticket. There, there you go. All right, Steve, so i give you the last word as you look forward to 2017. We, if we meet again here next year, yes. what do you think the topic's going to be? Again, I, I think what you're going to see is more folks moving to a public cloud, trusting that, and really working with it, using analytics. And the most important thing that we, we touched on is managing that security, making sure they don't get hacked. Right, so. all right, Steve. Well, uh, Steve from S-M-P-T-E. That was the shorter way. There Steve Wong, I'm Jeff Frick. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks so much. All right, Goodbye. you're watching theCUBE from NAB 2017. We'll be right back after this short break.